Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tori. If you're new here, welcome to a very sunny day here in Colorado. I am taking you along with me. We are about to pop out to the grocery store later on this evening, but before we do that, we wanted to clean out our pantry, clean out our fridge and freezer, just so we can save some money at the grocery store. So we will be doing another pantry challenge and really seeing uh, what we can make with the extension of our refrigerator and our freezer. If you are new here, hi, hello. My name is Tori. We do life here in Northern Colorado on a budget. We are a family of four, almost five, and we do everything we can to pinch a penny here and there. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. Definitely give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And without further ado, we are going to get right into our meal plan and our recipes. So this is what I have on the agenda, plus another recipe that I'm gonna show you later. That's just two ingredients and super simple. But I do have all of this Colcannon left over. I knew that was gonna happen, so I saved it so I can show you how I make my Irish box tea, which is a potato pancake. I was going to make some sort of pierogi casserole with it, but I've made pierogies so many times on the channel, so I don't wanna bore anybody. I've never made boxy though, and it's really easy. So I'm just going to put that to the side. And then I have a little bit of a hodgepodge dish, and I feel like I do that a lot with rice or some sort of grain. So I thought about making an Asian inspired dish, and we'll do some thin spaghetti. We have this sweet potato here, and this is from our root cellar and it's looking good so i i'm excited um i have some cabbage here and then some asparagus and this pineapple i'm not going to use the entire pineapple but i'd like to get going with it get rid of it i guess and that is about it so i'm just going to mix all this together and it will be a lo mein of sorts so i'll probably put some coconut aminos in there some sesame oil garlic ginger all the fixins and then i also have a ton of apples left over and instead of something sweet i wanted to make some sort of savory dish so i'll probably just be making chicken salad and chickpea salad i also like to put apples in a curry though so that might be on my radar i'm not sure yet but let's get started with the box tea first just so that can go low and slow and then we will get started with cutting all of our veggies and getting this ready again not going to show you how i cut my veggies but i will show you how i put this dish together so this one is actually two ingredients as well kind of you're using your leftover coal cannon this is just mashed potatoes i have some sweet potato in there too which is giving it that orange ochre coloring and i have cabbage i have that video linked in the description box if you want to check it out but i am irish and wanted to showcase an irish recipe so this is basically all you're going to need you could use flour with this or you could use an egg i'm actually going to use both just because we have so many eggs i'm going to use a duck egg because we have so many of them uh and then I don't know a little bit of flour so i'll show you here in one sec so i have two eggs here these are duck eggs we have a welsh harlequin so her eggs are white but some eggs oh gosh before that becomes crunchy in there uh <laughs> we have cayugas is what i was saying and cayuga eggs are sometimes gra uh, gray or black or dark blue but yes this is what we're making right now and then also i do add quite a bit of salt back into here just because we're using that flour so i'm just going to break these eggs up first they were in the fridge on the top so they're a little harder than normal but let me grab the flour all right and you're going to start with about a half cup and then you're also going to be seasoning just because all of that flour might take away. So I'm gonna put garlic powder in here. And these are really great for just about anything. We serve ours with applesauce, which I could make some with those apples now that I'm thinking about it. Or uh, you could serve them with sour cream, could serve them during breakfast and make, uh, well, serve them with ketchup if you want to, but Yes, you're just gonna keep mixing until you get a pretty thick consistency and then you're gonna add some more flour to it. And I will show you the consistency that we're looking for here. It's a little thick. Uh, you're gonna roll them 
into little meatballs and uh, then flatten. So super simple and no food waste, yay. So now I'm gonna go in with just about a fourth cup, but I did wanna say I do have a video on what to do with leftover mashed potatoes. And I know this isn't technically a mashed potato, but it's pretty close, right? I love making gnocchi with this. You could do pierogies with this, like I said. You can use it as a thickener for soup, uh, like a potato soup or a cream-based soup. I've even used it in a lasagna form and put it on the noodles and made like a white lasagna, but there's a lot that you can do with your leftover mashed potatoes. Let me know in the comments what your favorite way to use your leftover mashed potatoes because this is my go-to every time these potato pancakes because the kids really love them. They're easy to do on the go, but once you get a sore arm, I feel like once it's a little hard to start passing your spoon through, I would definitely feel like it's ready to go here. So let me get a pan ready and I'll show you how I do this. It's kind of like a peanut butter cookie. So what I like to do with my pan, if I'm not using parchment or aluminum, is just put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom. And I take my handy dandy Dollar Tree Betty Crocker whatever you want to call this. I don't even know, but okay. And then from there, I take my cookie scoop and I do two scoops per patty. I did forget to say my husband really likes these on breakfast sandwiches. So if I'm making them ahead, I'll put a fried egg on there, a sausage patty or bacon. I will put this little potato cake and then I will put it on a bagel or an English muffin and he really enjoys that late night when he's working. But yes, I just do two per patty. And then from there, I just take my fork and what I meant uh, by a peanut butter cookie is I stick it in my flour and then I crisscross it down. Or sometimes I take the outside of it and crisscross it and that way the edges get super crispy and it's really tasty. So let me grab a fork and I put a little flour on top of it. That's the easiest way. And if you're gluten-free, just use your favorite gluten-free flour. That Then I press it. You can crisscross it, like I said, or you could go on the outsides and flatten it. Each way works well, but there's minimal butter in this recipe and you could fry these on a frying pan which is what my family does but i find things just easier to bake i don't know about all of you but i don't cook with uh you know bad seed oils i have my high-end olive oil here i do have a discount code with them um they sent it over to me but i uh you know it's really hard to deep fry things when you don't have a seed oil, I feel like. Coconut oil never works for me. So this is gonna go in the oven. I have it at 400 and it will go for about 20, 25 minutes and I flip it halfway. So I'm gonna get the other pan coated here and I'll catch you for the next recipe. All right, on to the next dish. First things first, the sweet potatoes and the thin spaghetti go into a saute pan uh, with some water and soy sauce. And then we add asparagus and, uh, well, I think we could add the coleslaw with this actually, but we add asparagus and pineapple last is what I'm trying to say. So let me show you how I get that going. All right, so I have a hot pan going, well, about to be, I spoke too soon. And then what I do is just put my pasta in here, just like this. I do not cook it ahead of time, but you can if you want. And I'm breaking the spaghetti. This is not an Italian dish, so it's okay that I'm doing that. All right. And I do have to cut the spaghetti anyways for the kids, so. You could also use lo mein noodles with this. You could, of course, use classic fried rice. Uh, I love fried quinoa. It's really tasty like that. Bulgur wheat is good with this. But essentially, you're gonna put some water in there and it's gonna cook all up nice and together. 
lot of garlic powder, great for immune support, especially now during allergy season, pollen is getting me. And I love the Coconut Secret Organic Coconut Aminos. When I was at Sprouts the other day, I grabbed the buy one, get one free. But here Trader Joe's has an organic variety of this. You don't need a ton, but I'm gonna add some water as well. So I did three cups of water to start. I think that will be plenty for a half box of pasta plus, you know, whatever's coming out of your coleslaw mix and the pineapple juice adds this really, I guess, caramelized element. So I don't add any oil or anything to this, but you totally could if you wanted to. I'm gonna let this come to a boil and then I'm gonna reduce it to a simmer and start adding the rest of my ingredients. So in the meantime, I'm cutting my pineapple. So asparagus and pineapple are cut up. I'm gonna go ahead and add the cabbage. I also have frozen peas. I might add that too. Once I start adding veggies, I really can't stop because everyone eats them in my house, except for my husband, but that's okay. Uh, maybe he'll eat this. And then this is what you're looking for here. So I went ahead and took the cover off and what I'm gonna do is let that go, uh, just simmer on low, I guess. And I'm gonna add the cabbage as well. And then I did forget I was making this. I found some yogurt on sale at the grocery store for $2.75. It came with a six pack for this Stonyfield Organic. And I thought I would try my hand at making a, uh, like a yogurt bark, so. I'm just gonna put it on this plate here and I'm gonna add some dark chocolate and some peanut butter. Okay, I forget where I left off. I thought something terrible had happened, but my daughter is in the dramatic stage. I'm pretty dramatic myself, so I can relate. But what I'm doing is taking this yogurt and I'm scooping it out. You could also make raspberry dark chocolate muffins and if you didn't know, I have a website and I have a really delicious recipe on that website for dark chocolate raspberry muffins. I don't share a lot of recipes on there just because it doesn't get much traffic uh, and it's really not worth my time. But if you wanna check out that recipe, you could make muffins with this too, which is good. So what I'm gonna do is smooth it out. I'm sure a lot of moms have made this before. I have not. so. I wanted to make this. Let me know what kind of flavor combinations you put on here. But what I'm gonna do is spread this out and I'm going to put some dark chocolate, drizzle some peanut butter. You could put fruit on here if you want. And then I'm just gonna put it in the freezer just like this with another plate on top of it just to cover it and then you are good to go. So instead of peanut butter, I forgot, I'm actually gonna do honey for some extra immune support and a little bit of sweetness. And who knows, maybe my husband will eat this now. I'm not much of a yogurt fan, so it's not really for me. Sometimes I'll do like Greek yogurt on like a savory chipotle bowl, just so I'm not eating all that sour cream. So I do love some sour cream, but yeah, this is how it's gonna go. It's very easy. You could also do sprinkles with this. You could do, marshmallows I've seen, but yes. In the freezer it goes. Here is what's happening on the stove. The noodles are cooking up nice. There's still a little bit of time to go on there, but the cabbage has bolted down. And now I'm adding my asparagus and pineapple. And I will add my peas in, and I'm actually going to just cover this up a little bit just so we can steam it and get the flavors ready. I forgot, I do have crispy onions too, and I love putting crispy onions on top of noodle bowls like this. You could also serve this chilled in a salad form with some arugula. That would be really yummy. I love like a chilled noodle salad, but let me find my peas here. I'm just gonna put that right in. This will basically be my dinner for the week because I don't mind eating the same thing over and over again, especially when I'm pregnant, just because I know what my body will like. A lot of good vegetables in here. Could top this with uh, 
like a English cucumber and avocado, that would be really yummy. But yes, I am going to just leave this go low and slow for maybe another 10 more minutes and it should be good to go, good to serve. So here are my boxy potato pancakes. I just have them in a container like this. You could freeze these. I would just suggest maybe putting some uh, wax paper or whatever between these just so they don't freeze together. And then we have some for the week as well. Very yummy, crispy. You can serve these with sour cream if you want, but so versatile, so easy to make, and no food waste, so that is exciting. I am going to plate up my noodles here, and I will catch you here soon. All right, here is how the noodle dish came out. As you can see, it's a ton of food. It's so much food, so it will last us throughout the week here. I will probably have it for lunch and dinner. I just don't get tired of dishes like this, but I'm going to get it into a container here. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to run two recipes for you here. This is what we have right now. I will let those other recipes play. Hey friends, tonight's little meal is going to be some taquito roll-ups, I suppose, but found these whole wheat tortillas and they were 80 cents. Then the Chad's smoked Gouda we've been eating on the whole week, but I'm gonna spread some of this on here and just fry it in some olive oil. I'm gonna serve it with some apples, strawberries, and some peas and keep it pretty basic. You could also put some sort of meat in here. You could put beans, but I'll show you how I put it together. First step is just to get these a little warmer so they're easy to roll. Here are the final plates. I went with asparagus instead of peas just because we had it fresh. The taquitos are crispy and delicious. And then the kids have apples. I'm gonna do some cinnamon on that and we are gonna enjoy. This one was very easy, but very delicious. I've already tried one. So, so yummy. Okay, I did wanna add this in here. It is a pantry challenge staple that I just swear by. We just have a box of the what is it? Organic Good and Gather Target brand macaroni and cheese, just your standard. And to make it stretch and just make it a little bit, I don't know, healthier, I guess, I added some kidney beans and broccoli. You could do a different form of canned protein. We're going to add a sprinkle of cheese on top of there, but it just adds a little extra oomph when you're in a pinch and all of it is super inexpensive. The broccoli I got on sale, please don't mind the mess, but I did want to add this in here because this meal right here is, you know, under $2, I feel like. And yeah, right. Yeah. Under $2 and it will feed us for the night and maybe a little bit into the morning for lunch or something like that. But I did wanna show you this one and include it. Very easy and simple to do. Alrighty, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope this inspired you to cook with what you have before you go out and purchase unnecessary items. I know that is my biggest time and money saver in the kitchen. I hope these recipes gave you a creative motivation to get in the kitchen today. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everyone.